On this episode, we're going to talk about being yourself and showing the world what the Small Arms Army is really about. Daniel. Yeah. You get to hear the origin story of uh, where Small Arms Danny came from, <laughs> and you get to learn how to chuck the bicep. <laughs> There's nice. a lot more to it than that, Trey Speed. Yeah, as well as that, um, <laughs> you get to learn how to be comfortable with yourself yep. and uh, take yourself to new levels. Love it. Cole? I was going to say the same thing. You know, I think this is one that, like, if you can just be yourself – fucking show up whenever it's needed and be authentic, you'll have a lot more fun just in life, period. That's a fact. I really believe what we're going to lead you down a fun path of how like everybody got more comfortable being themselves on these microphones, including myself. And I think that there's a lot to learn as you're building and doing content and just like the reps are so key and believing yourself are so key. But sometimes you got to have an alter ego at first. Yep. <laughs> sometimes you got to be forced to do stuff at first. But the reality is, however you can get there so you can be more comfortable, there is more valuable, and I think it's a better way to live. All right, let's go to the show. Oh, cool. We are live, Roundtable Podcast. I'm your boy, Corey G, at Small Arms. Danny at Trey Speed in the graphic gangster himself, Cole Susak. Brought to you by MaxUpperMuscle.com. What's good, fellas? What's up, what's up? Happy Flex Friday, everyone. Happy motherfucking Flex Best Friday. Best fucking day of the week. I actually think that, I was telling Cole this, I actually think that I'm going to get potentially Trey Speed back on Twitter. Because oh, really? I've been emailing Twitter, and for the longest time, they weren't any help, but... I actually actually got that account taken down, and so I got suspended. Hell yeah! So after thirty days, I think you yeah. can get it back. Clear, yeah, yeah. Trace Hell yeah! Yeah, I think you got to keep that. Revival, yeah, Trey. I think so. Yeah. It's my Instagram one too. So actually, I mean, yeah. I actually just changed my Instagram name. I changed my handles to just Cole Susack. Oh, you did because because yeah. you know I I going the graphic gangster route that limits me because yeah. I'm a gangster just in general. I agree with that, but I'm also Donnie <laughs> Traps. I'm Cold Dog. Yeah. I'm fucking Cold all dog. this other stuff. Yeah, yeah I agree. Energy. Well, so, and I say Cole Susack, the graphic. So I still, yeah, you know, yeah. when I intro you. Yeah, when millions so, of people so are just, clapping, I'm, you know, I'm reevaluating my brand. I texted Susack. Trey. There's I texted Trey, and I was like, I was like, yo, because my handle X Susac was like my old like PlayStation sure. app that's video game stuff, and I texted Trey. I was like, yo, I just changed my ads, and he goes, oh wow, you're growing up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Your 12 year old uh, uh, handle yeah, from yeah. Xbox has changed. That's good. <laughs> yep. <laughs> well, thinking about branding, we had good branding talks today. No, we sure. finished the audio book today, which I'm fucking pumped about. I mean. How to Build Confidence and Win at Life is an actual official audiobook. We don't have the date we're dropping yet, but it is done. So mm -hmm. that feels really like a com feel really accomplished about that. What else? Um, I'm probably going to drink some fucking beer today. Dude, fuck yeah. I mean, feel yeah. fucking jacked. Yeah, I do yeah. definitely feel fucking jacked. <laughs> yeah, super yoked. Beer yeah. Fridays. Yeah, man. Yeah. So, yeah. all right. So, Danny, you had something that. <laughs> yeah. Well, 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 good, good. You really glazed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so, we're talking about our Twitter, our username, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, just our personalities, how we're evolving, we're growing. We're spilling the mic for two yes. years now. Facts. People are really starting to showcase, like, Dog. They're following us on social media, like, yeah, fuck with these guys. But the one big thing that for a long time wasn't happening was Danny's a fucking like low key savage. Yes, he's, he's got he's got a real good personality, but it was all behind the camera. <laughs> yeah, we only we knew that. Yeah, only we knew him as Small Arms Danny, but the public knew him as D Walt O Three. Right. <laughs> right? <laughs> And for the longest time, we <laughs> rallied. Sorry, uh, I was like the frontline army of like, please, Danny, like change your handle with the at small arms, Danny. Like yeah. it needs to happen. You need to yeah. showcase everything. We bugged the fuck out of him. Yeah. And then eventually one day he he shocked the world, shocked the nation, the millions and millions of people. Were like, where's small arms? I'm looking for small arms on Twitter. I can't find them. Who the fuck is D Wall 03? <laughs> he changed his Some name. <laughs> but now, yeah, exactly. But now you know he's evolved. People are seeing him. Interviewer Danny, small arms Danny, leader of the arms army, the, yeah, general, the general, leader of the daddy gang. Yeah. Which we want to talk about because uh, yes you I, like the people want to know i'm getting D, like we're all getting dms saying danny Everybody how's daddy gang how's your how's <laughs> what, what's it like leading the arms army so danny how what like give us a daddy update a how's dad, that going yeah you know she was 12 weeks yesterday um little evelyn is her name so it's been like the coolest experience in the entire world pretty much from the time she came out to the time you know she's wearing a little dinosaur onesie today yeah you know? yeah, yeah. So, yeah. uh, and then just seeing like Linda, like with her progression and like the whole, like the hormonal shift, that's been interesting. Not like in a bad way necessarily, but, uh, and then like her, sh like immediately thinking about changing careers and now, now that or not careers, but like changing jobs and now that's actually happening. So she gets more time with her. Um, but yeah, it's just awesome to look like 
be so excited to go home to see to see that's them. cool fuck yeah, yeah. so um and then you're when you're there you're like you're there i was just like, gonna yeah. say you seem very present in this yeah like ultimately present which is mm -hmm. awesome danny yeah like you're just literally just she's sitting on your lap or you know she just wants to be on her belly on the floor playing with a ball you know it's like it's like the most simple stuff but like like you don't care about like anything else so, yeah and that's yeah. how it should be right there you guys can learn from this yeah, guy for that's sure. exactly mm -hmm. i wasn't very good the first time around i still had too much going on like mm -hmm. too much chaos too much like look our lives are always going to be somewhat chaotic but they're just more organized now so like with ag especially when he was super young like that i was super busy still so yeah. like that's what i recognize about danny he's we're still busy but it's in a different way and he's got enough freedom to be able to be like that mm -hmm. and i i kind of regret that a little bit because i didn't have which i have like zero like regrets mostly in life but that's what now i got better as my kids got came continued to pop out yeah yeah which yeah they definitely yeah. pop out too yeah so how <laughs> like how's how's the balance been of now you know like obviously you have a, like a little one to manage but also like trying to keep up with here how's that you know yeah, yeah like i already feel like there's already been like a crossroads already in the first 12 weeks and that was when we linda and i were talking about like you know do you want to go back to work? Like she already was having that thought of like not wanting to go back. Yeah. Um, just because, I mean the job, but then obviously just to be like the stay at home kind of mom. And then like, then we're trying to see like how that would actually work, which we, we settled on like a solution, but that, that was really interesting because now I feel like, well, it's like you said, you, you automatically are pushing harder just by default. Just the way it is. And yeah. That, like you're trying to find other things that you can do because now like my, like one of my huge goals is to basically like replace what she makes. So it's just not even a, like a question, you know, despite like the, you know, the complexities of insurance and like benefits it all out. and all that stuff. So just like not having to worry about that. So um, but balancing it is, is inter interesting because she's made a few comments, uh, here and there, mostly just kind of like jokingly, like chirping at me. Yeah. But like, I've had a few of those over the years. <laughs> yeah. Well, so, <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. So especially MP days, right? Oh yeah. God. Yeah. <laughs> um, so like, even like last night I was struggling hard because I wanted to find, like, I've been like on the war path with, uh, ever since we got on Shopify plus and like figuring out this new, uh, you know, functionality with the bundling system and everything. So I'm like, I'm like wanting to test. I'm like, wanting and by to the way, I'm not telling out. Danny to do this. He's just doing yeah, this. Yeah, just <laughs> like this is not like Danny, make sure you do this. Yeah. Well, He's like, like, no, I'm on these chat rooms. Cause I'm trying to learn. <laughs> well, like I felt like guilty. Cause I knew on the way home, I'm like, I know her friend is stopping over cause she's meeting Evelyn. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, all right, well, maybe I'll get like a half hour on the computer then to do this. <laughs> and so, so I'm like, I'm like t trying to like test stuff out, but not be an asshole and be rude at the same time. And then like, Oh, she went to sleep and then, Oh, oh Linda fell asleep. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah. I'm like trying to like squeeze. Got to find your spots, bro. Yeah. So I don't know. It was kind of like, an obs so I just have to be careful with that. But even being mindful of that, I think like that's like a good being a, I think I, I wasn't, what are you, 30? Mm -hmm. So I was a little About bit younger than you, but not, I just think like that, just that understanding, Danny, is everything. That's why I think there's a lot of value in talking about this stuff because you know, like you're trying to pick the spots because you know you need to get it done, right? For you. Um, so you're, you have more lights out at your, at what you do here. And, but you're trying not to take away. This is good for these guys to hear as they get older and whether they have kids or not, but like understanding that. And John Yules will tell you this stuff because we've talked about it a bunch. Like, you know, when you're really super focused, bro, like you don't see a lot of stuff mm -hmm. and like you can miss a lot of things like, and, and I definitely did at times for sure. Cause I mean, you're obsessed. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like, but having that, like understanding hearing guys like me tell you, like you need to be like that. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like it's, it's important. And so I'm, I'm, I'm always going to fight that stuff. Yeah. I mean, I it's mean, just part of it. The three backstops, which they have not changed in like the past, like five years are the daily stoic, uh, the conversations you have here mm -hmm. and then, um, writing, writing them down. So like, especially once, I mean, I was real, I was pretty good about it in 2021, but like in 2022, I haven't missed a single day. As you write every day. Yeah. As far, even if it's like two lines, like, or like if there's nothing there, then whatever. But like, it helps me like, filter my mind so i like i'm understanding like what the fuck i'm doing or how i'm in impacting 
like what's going on at home. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't, just so that I'm aware. That's all, that's all yeah. it is. It, you're, you basically created a diary so you can be a, more aware. Yeah. And now it's becoming cool too, because, cool. because now it's, it's, it goes back to documenting because oh, now bro. I can, especially right now, because, because then I can remember like, Oh, she uh, is starting to be able to turn over onto her back now yeah. or roll over it onto her, her stomach or she like can hold her head, head up better, you know, like I'll document all these little points in time. So I not, when I can go back and I'm like, I literally, I'm like, I literally you're, can show her when this you're happened. You're never going to be mad that you did extra content or wrote stuff down. You're never going to go back and be mad. Yeah. That's why I've always pushed you guys to post more often too. Like do, it's just another form of documenting. You're never going to be mad. Like when I go back and look at stuff like different parts of my life, I'm so glad I put it all up, mm-hmm. wrote about it, you know, or did like daily fires during the pandemic. I'm yeah. going to go back and look at that. My brain was completely different than it is right now because of all the shit that was going on, right? You're, you're, you're locking stuff in years of this podcast. Like we're never going to be upset that we got all this stuff taped. Yeah. It's kind of like if you think about like a family legacy or something like that. Like I think of like my my mom's family because they had like I mean this is still around, but they have like a stone company, or like they had like a lumber mill and like you look back at like pictures and and like I think of like my grandpa because he was really good at telling stories, but I'm like I wish there was more shit like written down. Of course. Or like if there was more, there's a decent amount of pictures, but I'm like that'd be just so cool to to be able to document or showcase that kind of stuff. Well, that's what you're able to do now. So, yeah. But I think the presence thing is uh, people can grab a lot from that. And then I also want to piggyback off what Cole said. Danny's um, comfort level with us was the personality we knew that could then be shown to the world more, right? By forcing him to do the podcast, forcing him to do the the interviews, which the interviews. Correspondence. Yeah, the correspondent interviews are one of my favorite. (laughs) And then finding, and I would argue that, um, uh, what's your alias? Uh, John. Uh, well, What's there's your... like three of them. <laughs> yeah. there's, 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 there's like the graphic gangster, Donnie Traps. Mr. Donnie Traps, okay. Well, hey, yeah. but, 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 but my newest one is Cold Dog. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So Cold Dog is like my juicy <laughs> whenever dog? I'm feeling it. Yeah. Yeah. Juicy? Cold Dog is me. Let me, address, I'm cold dog. let me address the first one. I think Mr. Energy did for Cole a little bit what Small he Arms did. Danny is doing for him, meaning that, you know... Then, which also makes me think about myself because I don't need a character. I think I might just be a character, (laughs) but it basically made you guys just go be yourselves really. Cause this is the same humor Danny shows every day in the office. People just don't know it. Now they do. Right. And then same with the Mr. Energy and the Donnie traps and the now just how you operate in general, Cole. So I just think that's interesting that if that's a way that makes you feel, cause it's almost like you're making fun of yourself. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. But it's fun because yeah. it's really you guys. Is that you know what it's, I'm trying to get at? It's yeah, like yeah. it's yeah. like a pathway it's to su- it. It's super authentic because I because how I act like the Mr. Energy is as how I was acting in the gym. Yes. Like the art, the grunting, the yelling. That's <laughs> but Mr. Energy gave me like the outlet to basically put it out into the world. Like yeah. to where put it on blast. And that really came about because there was one day where we were like cause you were like testing me with like starting to get me on camera. Yeah. Like you would make me do dumb shit on camera. I look like an idiot, right? But then there was one day, yeah, there was one so day good. that you didn't come to the office and there was like a deal or something. You're like, Cole, I need you to make a video. I don't know what, like, I'll what, put you but, in. Yeah, basically, you put me on the spot. And that's whenever Mr. Energy came about. And so I, good. it like unleashed, like, the whole, it like unleashed. Was that like, when you were on the roof? Was that a uh, different one? Th- that, that was like that was that was like the first few things. I yeah, guess. yeah, yeah. It was the, a series. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It was like it was like I did the roof. Then there was the one video where uh, the tank top one. The tank top one where yeah. like I like had energy all over my face. Yeah, yeah. And so like good. I fucking domed it and shit. Yeah, I that was the, like the first. One of the secrets is is forcing content. Yeah, because yeah. it basically I'm forcing confidence on you guys, which I really enjoyed listening to your guys's um, Twitter Spaces because yeah. I hear what I hear here, right? And it's a lot harder to pick up on that than it is uh, in Twitter person. Twitter spaces are, yeah, they're super they're, unique because you, you don't pick up on social cues. But you guys have yeah. enough together that you can you can hear them and I could feel, like, yeah. I'm just saying, like, you guys would be f- so much more awkward if you never did this. It's just a fucking a fact, percent. right? Yeah. Three years of being on the microphone every week and then being forced to do content or, like, Trey, for, not forcing, like, because of what he did with the vintage stuff, like, that's just Trey, Right. You're getting Trey, actual Trey on the vintage stuff. And when I would see that, I'm like, ah, you know what I mean? You could see like, because even when we're talking about 
certain things, it's not the thing you absolutely love all the time. But with the vintage clothes, I saw Trey's like true passion yeah. of, of that. So then it's just so smooth yeah. and smiling and talking. I'm like, yeah. damn, all right, Trey. Because what our, <laughs> what our stoic friend Peters talks about is how people wear all these multiple faces. For sure. Right? Yeah. And, you know, there's Trayvon the air. Then there's Trayvon. And yes. now there's Trey Speed. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah. 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 You know? <laughs> and I think because yeah, yeah. Cause Mr. Energy was like, it was like the V1. It allowed me to learn all this stuff and stuff like that. <laughs> but then like eventually like you, you transform. Like, For sure. You evolve. And that's whenever Donnie Traps came about. Yeah. But the Donnie Traps, uh, the coming up of Donnie Traps is and, re really good. And all, all of this is like kind of inspired by wrestling. I think of wrestling course. inspired me because there was one specific dude named Mick Foley who actually went to Michaela's high school. So, oh, no kidding. Yeah, yeah, Shout out, Mick. Yeah, side note. And then, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but he, but in wrestling, someone's going to tweet us. Thanks for the shout out at some point. Yeah, we so just yeah. got to get a little bigger. It's a numbers yeah. game. Yeah. That's all. Mick, if you're listening, <laughs> shout out. Huge inspiration. But like you see, there was multiple versions of his character because you just get stale and it's not, yeah. you, you kind of grow out of it. It's maybe it's not as fun. It's not you anymore. Or just like the undertaker. They had, he has multiple personas. For sure. It switches things up. It changes you. It gives you a little bit of different juice. You yeah. Know? I like it. So now like, yeah. Cold dog. Anytime I just hop on the mic, it's cold dog. Cold dog. That's me. Yeah. No. Well, I mean, I think when Peters did say that, it made a lot of sense that not everybody's going to be the same all the time. And I brought it up whenever I was at one of Annan's baseball games, and the guy that uh, was coaching was starting to you know, watch the content. And he was like, dude, you're like a whole different cat than what I'm seeing here. And I was like, yeah, what, what do you mean? He's like, I just watched what you did this morning at the gym, like, but you don't operate. I'm like, yeah, but this is not the spot to operate like that. Like, I'm not going to yell after a 700-pound squat like when Annan misses a, <laughs> a ball at shortstop. You know what I mean? Like, that's not – I'm not the same. Yeah. But that's where that violence and peace came in because I'm thinking about the, you know, the nature of the gym and what we're doing here compared to, like, me being out in the public. And so it was funny. And, and I have uh, definitely worn different hats for you because there's different personalities to me. Mm -hmm. But I think – here's the other thing I'll, I'll tell you guys. Because I didn't grow up with social media, Right. I had so much of a head start of just working on myself. And, and then when social media locked in, I was like, where do I sign up? Yeah. Where you guys grew up in it and then had to like get some reps <laughs> to then feel comfortable to let it out. And that's yeah. my perception. Well, also like, I mean, sense? like, yeah, us growing up, like, I, I wouldn't even say I had a self like identity yet. Like I didn't, yeah, like, yeah. I'm, I was still like figuring things out, you sure. know? So, yeah. I was already in a, I was already like a grown ass man when I went on social yeah, media. So, yeah, but but now I'm getting to a point where like I'm I'm just comfortable with yeah like, who you are yeah this is it like and that's kind of my point of the talk is that finding a path to that to where people can actually see who you are I can see that I've seen that in every one of you guys in your own way right and that's the one thing that a lot of people lock on to me because of because I'm just me and like you either fuck with it or you don't. I don't know. There's either going to be it's value a, or there's not. It's like the either you fuck with it or you don't. It's like a huge thing. But it, yeah, and, and I'm okay with either way. I know I'm not for yeah. everybody. I can see it in people's eyes in person. Like when I see them, like they don't fuck with the way I operate. They think this or that. I can tell if you fuck with me or not. It really doesn't change anything about how I'm going to operate though. I'm just going to mm -hmm. be myself. Mm -hmm. You might not be yourself. Motherfucker, I'm going to be myself. And so once again, same with the microphone, same with this, same with that. Rachel made a point, like I did uh, that um, the picture that Cole put out from the uh, the what was it called from the beanbag of the CEO. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she goes, "Why wouldn't you crop out the stuff plugged in and stuff over there?" I'm go because that's how it looks. <laughs> it makes it better. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I think so too because yeah. it's real. Yeah. So I, you know, like I did see that in the picture, but I didn't think, oh, we should cut that out. Now if Cole would have just cut it out. I wouldn't have said Cole put it back in, yeah. but I don't, I'm not mad that it's, I've got three things plugged. It's just the point of like, when you're okay with just how you are, you don't have to like try to be anything else. And people, once again, the authenticity is what they lock onto. So I think what's funny is that Danny's feels more like himself just being Danny because now he's small arms Danny, but he's small arms Danny anyway. Yeah. Like that's how we, you know Now what I mean? the millions of people know who small Correct. arms is. Correct. Yeah. And They're now, biting at the edge. How do I get inducted into the arms army? And I'm pretty sure there's a picture this that I took this morning that could be, like, worthy to hit that page. Well, it's yeah. about time. Yeah. Wait. Danny, can you, uh, yeah, talk about your experience of leading the arms army? Because I think it's like, super important. It's you really know, important. You've taken on a big role. I would so say it's a bit collaborative. 
with yeah, you. Yeah, for sure. Right? Absolutely. To some, to some well, yeah, because you had a picture of Tom Platts out the other day I saw. I did. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Shout out. Shout out Tom Platts. Shout out Tom. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't even know. Where do, where do I begin here? Oh, just. Uh, I mean, it's, I a, guess, it's a special privilege. Uh, no, first a thousand of all. percent. But how's it like, I guess like in the grand overarching things, like the arms army is like what like we've always had, but now you're bringing it to the forefront. Yeah, so it's a yeah, it's a collective effort. Um, it's an exclusive group. Exclusive, exclusive yeah. group. Yeah. So how does one get inducted into the Arms Army? I mean, we have a. a l- <laughs> 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 As I said, we have a lengthy uh, process. A lengthy process. Yeah, yeah for filtering people, but uh, <laughs> some. It's kind of like when you know, like at a uh, like at a prestigious university, like like Harvard, they have sure. like yeah. final clubs. Yeah. It's kind of like that when they slide the envelope under the door. Yeah. It's, it's kind of like we're that. basically or like the Harvard or uh, the Harvard of Arms. Yeah. Are we gonna punch? Are we gonna punch you or not? Yeah. Exactly. You know? Yeah, but one thing I was—it's like the it, knock yeah, for the this, Hall of the, Fame. The arms, are, yeah, yeah. No, the one thing I one the one thing I do like is on like uh, Instagram or like Twitter and stuff. How if you put like hashtag Flex Friday, you get all the fitness spots or like tag blah blah blah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now we have a response. We we keep going like send the front line, send it. We're like no, we're gonna. <laughs> See, I tagged you. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I just tagged him and said send pics, and I'm like cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> so good. Yeah. Anyway, Trey, but, but, well, hold on. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Cole. No, like, can you talk about, like, how, like, us running the Twitter space and stuff, like, you're... Because we fucking run this pretty good, I think. Yeah, Real the, good. The Twitter spaces are super fun because, like, back to Corey's point, too, like, just have, just, like, us being even, like, being on the mic, like, like how we are. Because, like, um, I mean, like, one thing people don't realize is that we did the roundtable for a whole year before, before it came back you out. listened yeah. on, like, on <laughs> iTunes or Spotify. Yep. So, like, the first, so, like, I don't, I think there's, like, 30-something episodes on iTunes or Spotify, but really there's, like, 80, like, 80 yeah. episodes or something like that. Yeah, which we, is, we yeah. basically which is fucking, done it for, like, 100 fucking weeks. Which is fucking, <laughs> wild, it's wild, though. Yeah. But, so, the Twitter spaces are super cool. And it's, I mean, it's challenging, but I really enjoy it because it's, it's basically what we're doing now. But yes. if anybody's listening, you can't see us, but like we're talking, like we're actually like facing each other and the, having a conversation, yeah, yeah. but Twitter spaces are weird because it's just the audio. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. But I think what's good to know is like even this podcast, just like how we're doing now in our, our Twitter spaces, this is how we talk anyways. Yeah, it's not correct. like we're trying to talk but any to differently. But to get it to that point like that. is the hard part for that's everybody. So th- yes, that, yeah. that's my point is that. If you're trying to get whatever it is you're building more um, looks, like you have to get comfortable. That's why the skits are the perfect start point Mm -hmm. uh, at max. Because even like when I think one of the breakthroughs from Nick Sands was the air guitar. I don't oh. know if you guys remember it. Dude, he killed it. Right? Yeah, like, that was but amazing. He, he never barely talked do you, before that. I, I think before the air guitar was Super Nick. I, you weren't. You oh, were in the office. Oh, okay. But he dressed up as a superhero oh, yeah. for that's one of the promos. Right. We need to bring and that back. And he owned it. He loved it. Yeah. See, that, that's what I'm that saying. That was the breakthrough. That's like bringing a quiet or making da- or making Danny be the correspondent. Like, yeah. Like we're giving him no notice. To be, be clear, like, yeah. to, 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 <laughs> to be clear, I still don't like being in skits. I don't yeah, fucking believe that. Day. Yeah. But you, hey, you. But <laughs> actually, but, actually but, yesterday's but, was kind of fun. If it's in your <laughs> element, just how. Yeah, yeah he didn't look real fucking nervous just when he was curling. Yeah, because it's in his <laughs> element. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which <laughs> was true. amazing. Yeah, nah. can you talk about. Uh, because, you know, by the time this podcast come out, people might have missed it. Can you explain what the skit was yesterday? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're. Uh, so basically, <laughs> Dustin and his craftiness and woodworking abilities. Pretty uh, amazing. Yeah, yeah, he repurposed a pallet, a couple of pallets, to make. A curl station <laughs> to, to, make, the arm hub. to make the arm hub <laughs> for the next uh, or for next week for the Arnold Sports Festival, which so we good. are going to be doing yes. a curl competition. Yes. So. Which, comes which again, the entire premise of one having a curl station at the Arnold. No other booth is going to have that. you have to wear a not small shirt every day. Oh, yeah. Probably. Of that's course. A, that's a yeah. Given. Yeah. Like I'll have to, I'll have to stock up. Just, yeah. This is kind of <laughs> on the same level as the Granville Parade where we just bench press on the float. <laughs> it's just super authentic. Like, <laughs> it's so good. It's super authentic, and yeah. it's literally a cheat code because there's no other company no. or group of people Bro. that can replicate that. No, no one's going to have You're going to be live, ones. ain't you? It's going to be fucking <laughs> Peters, Peters needs to make an arm hub poster. Uh, no, yeah, he will. Yeah, seriously. Yeah. Like, uh, but just the entire premise of the fact that we're going to the Arnold Classic... <laughs> <laughs> where Arnold's going to probably walk by the booth and say what's up. Yeah. And we'll have a curl station. I'm going to try to get Arnold dude, to curl. Dude, have him curl. Yeah. That, in front of these thousands comes, will, of people yeah. who don't really know us. Yeah. But we don't like, if they come and see us and they're like, oh, we love these guys. There might be a lot of people who say, what the fuck are these guys doing? Like, yeah. I'm not messing curling. with that. Either way, we're still going to be banging curls. Dude, so, if he's curling, I'm, I'm touching his bicep as he's curling. <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying. That's a goal. We get, Hey. Well, yeah, his security guy works out here, so you yeah. probably won't get slammed, but. Yeah. 
But I guess like the entire thing is like it's just everything about it is just super authentic. Yeah, well, yeah. Like, I mean, no Dustin one, built it. Yeah, yeah, built it. It looks like it's the it's wood. It's on sick. brand. It's yeah. literally like there's literally a place for the easy bar. Yeah, to sit. that's. I remember <laughs> he walked back out. He's like, I think I need to cut the grooves deeper so when people slam the bar, like the yeah. clips don't get broken. And I'm like, yeah, of course, D. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> go for it. <laughs> I, it's gonna end up in the gym. Oh, like it's just, a ma- it's just it's a just a matter of, it's just a matter of time. Like every time you yeah. pass it, yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah. fucking epic. Um, <laughs> I think what this has ended up becoming is basically how do you get comfortable with yourself on social media and content. I mean, that's what yeah. we're talking about, really. Essentially, yeah. yeah. I mean, you just I mean? really just with yourself in general. Yeah, you know? true. And and it's been cool for me to watch that process because I do all this shit on purpose to you guys mm-hmm. on like yeah, fuck you know <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, because I know. When the baseline of comfortability and confidence of the entire group is way higher and elevated from this, from social, from whatever, how do we not like continue to elevate, right? I cannot be the only one that's comfortable on camera. It's mm-hmm. impossible, right? And it's like I knew and I've seen it. We've all seen it. I mean, you, Tyler's performance as the Unsolved Mysteries guy. Dude, he's going he's gonna to have an act. Did you see career. that, Trey? It's yeah. fucking epic. Like it's, I told my mom, amazing. like you have to watch this. He just yeah. like goes into the character and he's in there. it, dude. Yeah. Fucking there. And and to me, because everyone obviously that's only stuff we do for small little periods of time, but that just adds to <laughs> what we're building so <laughs> yeah. much. Um, it, it, it's it's unbelievable. Or like, you know, there's certain topics on the podcast when Trey just runs, and you're just like, because he's mostly pretty quiet and picks his spots. But then when there's things that he rocks on, you're just like, damn, all right. Like Trey been thinking about all that, right? That whole, but it's like what? the comfortability yeah. to do that because now that's just normal is like, is awesome because you can give yourself to the world. I think that's it, the part. It, like, that's the best when Trey is talking so fast, he can't keep up with his own fucking He's thoughts. so excited. Yeah. Some of the phone calls we have, like it like literally nonstop. I'm sure. Non-stop which is, talking. but it, which is good. But most people that have been around Trey in their life, he's a quiet dude, but mm-hmm. because of the things that you guys are working on, we've worked on all these reps, then you're getting a chance to really see what's in there. I don't know that there's a lot of people that ever really get there and y'all are getting there young, which is really important. Right. And I think the same thing, like me and Danny have had a million great conversations since he worked with me, but he would never on the mic because of how awkward he was. You fucking force him to do it. Still awkward. Give him a fucking small <laughs> arms title. And now we're fucking off I think the races. Getting in the position of forcing yourself to basically ha- have to. Maybe do you this. guys are afraid to tell me no, whatever. Well, but I think, I mean, I think it's part of it. It's just like, <laughs> you didn't give us you an option. Yeah, right. that's just, maybe that's it, Trey. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Trey, you're on the podcast now. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, it's like if you keep doing it, like eventually it's going to get better. It's Even incrementally like, going to yeah, get better. Because like the first time, like we're on the porch and you asked me to, or like, Hey, guess what? You're running the show. I was like, well, fuck me. me. Yeah. <laughs> Kenny, I, I think I blacked out. I don't remember that episode. Well, I yeah. think I remember. <laughs> <laughs> I think I remember how um, I felt when I was thrown things and then I delivered. I felt how it goes. It like It's like another brick. Mm-hmm. Like when Arnold would throw something at us and we'd kill it. Or when I would get us in a spot where I was like, all right, this is like one of them spots and I murder it. And then my confidence would be like, put me in the fucking spot. You know what I mean? Or if I'm on the spot, I'm good. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, and there's still things I mess up. I mean, that's like with anything. But but you want the ball. Correct. And that's the mentality I got from sports, from Mm -hmm. paying attention to MJ. And like, you Mm -hmm. know, hey, you want – when we're sitting on the team, I want everybody to be able to get the ball. See, that's the key. I know I can take the fucking shot. My jumper's motherfucking wet. (laughs) But (laughs) – no, it's not. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Neither is your stray. <laughs> but what I, my point is, is that if the whole group's confidence grows up, then that can really be anybody. And that right there is very yeah. key, I, I think. I just told you the other day in the gym, I was like, I feel like if we would go and sit down with like LeBron or someone, Arnold, whoever it might be. Wouldn't matter. We like I would feel comfortable. I would literally be straight up fucking yep. on it. Well, and look at the quality of like everything that's being produced. Well, he's gonna see it when we do the videos, right? There's gonna be graphics attached to it, like you know yeah. what I'm saying? There's gonna be edits around it. Like he's gonna yeah. see it. And, and like that that's just what it is. Get yeah. <clears throat> getting like forced into the position where now it's like it's on you, like you pretty much have to perform, like getting in that spot. Because with our NFT project and stuff like that, we're essentially getting forced into a position where now we have to start making content. Yep. Or not or it's not gonna produce. Yeah, yeah. 
for sure. Which is, but once again, all the reps getting ready, you're like, all right, yeah, what do we got to do? Spaces, you know, our yeah, own show, easy. whatever. Yeah, it's easy. And that's, that's the point. Putting those reps in that are uneasy a long time ago, make it easy. And then people are like, man, why are these guys so smooth? Why are they, man, this, no problem, you know? And then what, I, that's why I like with some of the younger dudes coming in and asking you guys questions, they're seeing how comfortable, like how we threw Bobby on the squad every day thing the other day. Mm-hmm. It's the same shit I was doing to you guys. Yeah. And then he came off. He's like, that wasn't that hard. We were just having a conversation. Exactly. Yeah. Well, you I, don't have really think time to overthink about it. You're just on the show all of a sudden and I'm asking you a question. (laughs) (laughs) But that's the key. So I think, you know, if you learn anything from all these talks, it's like, you know, just putting yourself to be uncomfortable on the spot, but then also just believe in what you're, a lot of people tend to overthink and not believe the first thing that comes out. Meaning like when I'm doing something, I, my intuition says, say this, I just say it. As long as it's not fucking outrageous, but even if it is outrageous, if it's true to me, then how could it be wrong? It's yeah. not wrong to me. So it's like when people will fuck up a lot of things, I think because they're overthinking what, oh my gosh, it's coming to me. What do I say? What do I say? How about you just say what comes to mind? Yeah. Or if you're like me and like maybe words just aren't doing it, just start fucking flexing going, Dah. yeah, yeah. I mean, that always works you know? too. So I think, but I've talked to Rachel about this because her brain works a lot different than mine. And she's like, you know, when you're over complicating maybe the mic pass, then it's hard to be a truly authentic because you're thinking about Danny probably maybe could identify with this a little bit. Like you're thinking maybe the thought of what someone else is going to think about what you're saying, not just what you're saying. Right. Cause you've talked yeah. about like your brain works a little bit like well, what that, you said before was like when you're like, you know, your, your turn is coming. Yeah. You're like, fuck, well, you fuck, should fuck, think fuck, about, fuck. Hey, what am I going to say? It's kind of like that yeah. to some extent. Well, like that, that can also be a negative thing too, because then it takes away from listening to the person. Agreed. Talking. So there's two, there's two, cause if you just believe what is being said and you're just going to answer exactly how you would, you're not really, you know, overthinking and not listening to. So that really, that overthinking process takes you out of the present. I think. Oh, like in a sure. way, hold on. This will be good. Ray, Ray, you're on the podcast live on Twitter. How's Andon doing? Yeah, and and how's uh, Danny <laughs> wanted to know about Andon's comment this morning? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're going to be friends when he gets older. Yeah, he's ridiculous. <laughs> he's a dog. Hey, we're just talking. About- he was like, yeah, asking me if I could see it from like a cross. <laughs> hey hey well i got you one thing we were just talking about was um yeah yeah we're talking about these guys doing content how i kind of force them to do content and we were talking about how me too yeah 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 like right now (laughs) (laughs) about how not overthinking when something's passed you so like right now i'm talking to you and you got to answer me back but if you overthink (laughs) what you're gonna say then it's not authentic so how do you then just say what's actually true in your heart ray i freeze and don't speak (laughs) (laughs) but we were talking about you know because danny's now leader of the small arms army daddy gang and the daddy gang how he's got more comfortable so maybe we need to give you um a title like that rage no (laughs) (laughs) no spotlight okay sounds great i'll call you in a little bit good talk yeah (laughs) later Fucking classic. Can I see you? <laughs> There's gonna be Dude. an amazing follow up conversation. Oh my with gosh. <laughs> I don't even know where we go from there. I don't know. That was yeah. Cool. But I think um ultimately we just come off talking about a, a book of confidence, right? The reps have made everybody in this room more confident, which means we'll be all more effective in what we're trying to build together and individually. And so I would just what would be recommendation, Cole? Somebody saying fuck. I'm scared to do any of the shit these I guys are talking about. Do what I did and go to the highest level of fucking extreme. <laughs> okay. Me, me Love yelling that. like yeah. a fucking madman, basically looking like a like basically like a fucking wacko. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And being getting on top of a roof and screaming out to the fucking entire yeah. town. Like that's the highest level of extreme you can go. Yeah. So then if I'm just sitting here in this room that I'm comfortable with yeah. talking on a podcast, really ain't that fucking bad. No. Well, and the fact that you weren't scared 
that like your you know the girl you date like her parents would see that part of you yeah you and they thought it was funny probably if like yeah they love it yeah like they're like i can't believe like this is real. you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that makes yeah. it amazing trey what's your advice mm, um the simplest way possible just don't be a bitch yeah just get through it yeah don't overthink it just do it well because like when you started doing those um those lives and stuff did you because they that that topic specifically so natural to you did you no, really, I already knew what I was going to talk about so you didn't have to like overthink it is my point yeah I didn't have to like prepare or anything. because it's something you love it's a passion yeah yours. the yeah that makes sense and that's what it looked like yeah. it looked like I was like ah I mean I'm telling you I learned a lot about beefy tags and stuff that night but I also learned a lot about you and that you know yeah. and I was like ah there's the guy like that's real Trey right there. This is like, not that I didn't get the real tray because we've had great conversations, but like the, the, there was an item that you were super passionate about, um, that was like, it like lit you up. And I was like, oh, this is cool. You know what I mean? I was witnessing it as a third party, which was really cool. Danny. Well, I don't know if I would scream to the town as my advice. But I did it. The entire town. <laughs> scream off the me. roof. Don't be a bitch. <laughs> yeah. Small arms. What yeah, is your so advice? We'll choke the bicep. Oh! 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 Yeah, 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 yeah! <laughs> <laughs> ah! Team bicep. <laughs> if, but if you, <laughs> on a serious note, semi-serious note, like if, <laughs> semi -serious. You're, yeah, if I mean, if you're doing like a podcast or a video or something, like do it with somebody you're comfortable with. I yeah. guess first maybe to start, somebody you know you can like conversate with. You well. already have conversations yeah. with. That's, yeah, and then kind of like progress. Obviously, the reps like just. Just keep doing them, though. Yeah, just yeah. keep doing them. I keep throwing shit at the wall and see what works and what doesn't work. It's definitely good advice because that's pretty much what you did with me. That's exactly what it, it was. All you guys. Two, we yeah. already we were, we were already having these conversations. Mm -hmm. So then I was like, well, these there's a lot of value here. We should be recording them. For sure. That's great advice. You What's your advice? <laughs> so <clears throat> I think it's a little bit of everybody's. Wear a beater. Yeah, well, that definitely fucking works. <laughs> <laughs> good. Anyway. I'm going to stay I'll PG. i that. Yes. Oh yeah, I almost wore it today just to like to finish the book. It was I only have three of them and they're dirty. We got to make some max effort ones. He was shirtless for one of the chapters. Yeah, just to I should have waited a couple more weeks when I was super yoked, but yeah. Um, but that but that was authentic. Mm -hmm. yeah. I came in, I felt fucking yoked. I was like, I'm just gonna do this shit shirtless. It's my fucking place. I make my rules. <laughs> <laughs> I think that it's a little bit of every one of you guys' advice, right? So, Cole, to your point, I come out of a big squat and I feel like yelling, motherfucker, I, uh, blah, blah, blah. That's just me. I don't have to try to do that. If it's some days I don't do that, some days I do, I'm not going to hold it back if I can be undoubtedly myself in that violent time of some big squat, which is what I ultimately love to do and why I got up that day. To, to, to do that like I'm not going to hold that back right so that is to me ah, screaming to the mountaintops Trayvon to your point of just not overthinking it like you know it was uncomfortable for me to read that book because I'm not very good at reading or writing or any of that stuff to be honest but I know like for it to be the most authentic I had to do I re listened to Will Smith's book and it made all the difference and I know that th that will make the difference even though at times it's a little choppy but I, I'm, I don't, I'm not embarrassed about that Fuck it. We just don't be a bitch and do it, right? And what was your point? <laughs> choke the bicep. Choke the bicep. Choke the bicep. Well, the first time I ever heard choke the bicep was from CT. Oh, when that's I, why I stole it from Yeah, sure. so when I go, CT, what size T-shirt you wear? And he's like, large? I'm like, I wrote, get the fuck. I like text him, like, get the fuck out. He's like, I want to make sure it chokes my bicep. <laughs> Shout out CT. Shout out CT. Yeah. What was your real point, though? Um, the ba basically, just conversating with somebody you know first. There you go. Yeah. yeah, and then on top of it, when I've started projects, it's never been usually with somebody that I haven't already had like a good chemistry with. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the individually, we've all had great conversations. I know the type of people you guys are. I know there's value. And for me, it was like, how can I like get the get it out of you guys and get it out to the world so other people can see what I see, right? Because that, that's why we do this. And then ultimately, the consistent part of it. So not be afraid, get through it, the chemistry, and then being consistent on top of it. That's how you're going to build confidence, which is all comes back to the book. If I think about my career and how I got this confident within these kind of areas, it's because I've been doing them. So the amount of content we create is astronomical, you know, so like when there is going to be, and they're all coming, the, these opportunities are coming when there is going to be a big stage that we're on. 
I just don't think no one's peeing down their leg. <laughs> Can you talk about real quick? Why is it important to be so authentic? Oh, because you don't got to try when you're authentic. There's no overthought. There's no thinking. It's just you. Good example. I did one live show and I was really nervous when I was audition, not auditioning, but practicing. Cause I'm not, I don't have to practice to be myself. Mm -hmm. I just don't. So like I'll kill it when the fucking camera comes on because I'm just going to be me. And so people don't process it that way. Um, and so if I'm like trying to act like somebody else, then yeah, I'm going to falter bad. I'm just being me. Then there's no reason to fucking worry yeah. about it. Yeah. I mean, he officiated my wedding. So yeah, that, yeah. that was enough. That was, I was nervous cause I didn't want to like, uh, I wasn't nervous when we actually did it. And when I wrote down the stuff I was going to say, but I was, yeah. yeah, it's such a big moment that yeah, I didn't want to sure. mess it up for Danny. You know what I mean? <laughs> and, and the, the, I for, forgot about how like awesome that was, but it's like, the, uh, you know, you trusting me to do it. That's where the nervousness comes. Not from me standing up and doing it. And like Linda's dad said, I did a good job. That made me feel real good when he did the toast. I was <laughs> like, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I always think about how you said, if you would have walked into Arnold's room, not being authentic and like basically was kind of fronting on what you knew, yeah, you, would. you would have got exposed. And 100%. it's important that like you, you, people can tell whenever you're not fully Oh, the real recognized real thing, which is played out. I don't really ever say that, but that concept is real 100%. And I can see it in people too. I might not say it and it might take me a little while sometimes, but eventually I see it now then how often or what I do about that might take some time or whatever, but people that are super fronters can only get away for away with it for so long. So I think why it takes a little people a little while sometimes for people to lock on to me is they wonder if it's authentic or not, especially in the lifting community. Mm -hmm. And then when they realize like, well, I'm still doing multiply 10 years later, you know what I mean? Like, this is just me. I don't yell because I want you to think I'm cool. I yell because it's my fucking gym. And if I want to yell, I'm going to fucking yell. Like, <laughs> fuck yeah. That's what it is. So I think that it's like when people lock on to that, then I think they have a different like appreciation for what's happening here. But Good fucking podcast. Yeah, it's good. We didn't even juicy. know what the fuck we were going to talk about. No, we turned just, the microphones on. Fuck yeah. <laughs> so good. All right. Roundtable podcast brought to you by MaxEffortMuscle.com. Your boy Corey G at Small Arms Danny at Trey Speed. Hopefully again on Twitter. And the graphic gangster himself, Cole Susak. We're out.